So pretty much all of our base coats are in place. We have got colors on everything and I also included um, the little papery thing on the bolt gun by now because that is something I forgot to do. So that has the same color as the purity seal on the leg right there. Now it is time to finally go for some shading because this model still looks bland as hell. <laughs> and I've collected some of my shade paints over here. So I have Seraphim Sepia, we don't need a whole lot of that, we're just going to use that for the white shoulder pad because that puts it in line with the other models that I have for the Jeans Stealer Cult. And actually I have one right here that isn't finished yet, that still needs all the highlights and stuff. Um, yeah, you can see basically the armor color though. It is the same color of grey, but with the Seraphim Sepia, so it has like a brownish tint to it. This one isn't finished, like I said, but this is the main color scheme that I'm going for. So this guy actually has a different color jacket, because he has his coveralls underneath, but there's still that little bit of blue on the legs, on the pants, basically. Anyway. Um, yeah. We also have Druki Violet. We're going to use that for the sash and we're going to use that for the purity seal i have seraphim no this is reichland flash shade which is of course going to be for the flash so the face i have agrax earth shade very important because that is what we're going to use for all the armor or uh, the, yeah, the, all the armor panels and finally i have gnome oil which is going to be used for all the metal parts now I think I want to start off with the small things first so that that can dry and I'd like to work on the face once it is fully finished. So we're going to take a and flash shade, we're going to give it a good shake, but this is a paint that you don't actually have to thin down. So I'm just going to grab the pot right there and for this I'm going to be using my Artificer layer brush once again. So grab the model, just get some, I haven't used this in a little bit so it's a little bit dry. I stopped using it last night, it is now the following day for me. For you it's just like a second difference, but for me I had a good, night, good night's rest. And we're simply going to slap that onto the face. And make sure that, it's, that it gets worked into all of the recesses. And this is always the stage, like I said, where I feel like my model looks ugly. And it is when I apply shade to it, that it starts to look a whole lot better. Because suddenly there is definition, there is a depth that becomes apparent, which isn't there before, and it's a really important thing. Now I also noticed just now that there is like a little spike on the back of this guy's head that I'm not sure you can see, but that should be painted in with um, a metal paint as well, because that is basically connecting up into his brain, and I'm assuming that it is a connection port for his armor or something like that because these guys have a what is called a black carapace right and it's basically a black layer under the skin that allows them to interface with their power armor now uh, this guy is pretty much done in terms of the face don't need to use that anymore so we're going to clean the brush and now we're going to take some Druki Violet because these are some small details that are quickly painted and then I can let them dry for a bit. So we're going to take some of that Druki Violet right there. I'm just going to work that onto the Purity Seal. That's a little bit too much, maybe. No worry, you can get rid of some of the paint on your brush. And then when you go back in, your brush should absorb all the excess paint on this thing. Of course, we need to be sure that we do take the sides of the purity seal as well, so that we have that blue, uh, purplish tint to the blue. And I can already tell my hands are kind of shaky, which is not great because we need to work with details here. So I'm going to take my time. Like so. And then finally, we're going to go over to the sash. We're going to run that over into all of the little details on the sash. 
and this is really going to help blend together the two colors, the blue and the purple. And it should now be become more of a whole, where it's, the color kind of blends into each other a little bit more. And that's going to be looking quite nice. After this we might go back for a highlight with blue, depending on how it looks. But for now I think this is going to be okay. So, close that off. Of course, need to clean the paint or uh, clean the brush again. Because we don't want to contaminate the pots or the color on the model. Right. Now we have Seraphim Sapia, not a small one. Again, good shake. Just going to take a little bit of that. And we're going to apply that to a little armor panel that we have on the arm right there. Not sure if you can see it. Okay, yeah, you can. Okay, cool. So you're just going to run that over. And immediately you can see it sinks into all the recesses. At least some of that uh, whiter color showing through, of course, it, because it runs past it into the recess. But it creates a nice look of dirt. Like this guy has been on his arms and knees crawling from cover to cover or something, trying to get close to the space wolves, you know. And I think that works out quite well. And that's all we need the Seraphim Sepia for. So we're going to clean the brush. And then there are a couple of things that we are going to want to do. So for example, all the metal parts, they're very easy. Because the metal parts, they are large areas that should be covered entirely in gnome oil. But the Agrax Earthshade is going to be a little trickier. Because we have all of these little lines on the back of the, of the legs, for example. These ones right here, they need all... Uh, they just need a thin line of the Agrax Earthshade. Same with the armor panel on the back of the leg, um, the helmet. Basically, every little crack, every little uh, depth and recess on this model needs a thin line of Agrax Earthshade. And that's time consuming. So we're going to first of all... Oh, crap. <laughs> My bad. We're going to take the normal oil, because that is relatively quick and easy. And it gives a really nice effect, because right now, um, right, this looks very bland. The metal on the, on the of the weapon, you know, it's a nice bright iron color, but it looks really off. It doesn't look correct, like proper metal. And applying a wash of non oil actually fixes that entirely. Non oil and the shades do wonders for the quality of a model. So this is really dark. We need to spread it out a little bit. But this really adds some depth, because this is going to pull around those little rivets, or whatever they're called, the little spikes. And it dirties the, the, the metal a little bit. So it looks a little older, a little bit more used. And like it's actually forged. And it's a really great effect. You don't really even need to do much afterwards to make it look good. Now this is simply a process where I'm going to run this into everything, including, of course, the whole length of the steel bar on the inside of the fingers, actually. And this is something I may not have mentioned. I glued on a little finger. I did not do that in the third video where I was putting this guy together, but it was bothering me that he did not have a thumb. And so I took the little hand that we cut off and I cut out a finger from that hand and I glued it on there. So now it actually looks like he has a thumb properly gripping that weapon that he just grabbed as he was being attacked. And I think that looks really cool. So a little bit of non oil underneath the fingers really gives us a sense of shadow being in that area, which is fantastic. This is really dark, so if, you're, if you think it's too much, like I have right there, try to clean your brush off a little bit. Right, go back in, try to absorb some of it, and maybe just put it somewhere else, like on the chains here. And actually this uh, melee weapon is so much better than what I was planning with the gun that he was going to grab. Because that looked weird as hell, but this actually has an explanation as for why the arm is still attached, right? Because it has a chain attached to the weapon going around the wrist, so he actually could not let go of it. So in the sense of a story being told 
This weapon is a, a much better choice than what I had originally had in mind. And it never even occurred to me. So this is pretty much just a happy accident. As Bob Ross would say. <laughs> anyway, we're going to continue like this. We are going to run some of this non oil into the backpack vents. Create a nice sense of depth and dirt, like griminess in there. Same thing, we're going to run this over this thermal fence. And it immediately makes everything look so much nicer. Now be sure that you don't do not get this on any of the armor panels that are grey. Because we want those to be shaded by the Agrax Earthshade. So right, and finally of course we have the bolt gun. We have these little straps. Not straps, but these breathing thingies, these pipes on the mask. We're going to run some of that stuff in here as well. Being very careful not to overspill onto any of the armor panels on that helmet. But of course we need to have the earpiece as well. There we go. And finally we have the bolt gun left to be done. Right? Um, I'm running out a little bit. It's becoming a little thin. So we're going to shake the pot again, create some more paint for us to use right there. And then we're simply going to use a brush to run this over. Now this is really, f that's a lot, we don't want that. So we're going to empty our brush a little bit and we're going to take some of that excess away. And we can put it somewhere else. Now do make sure that since this is a very wet paint, it's going to be very easy for this to pool in places where you don't want it to. So if you see it pooling anywhere, while it's still wet, move your brush back in. Take some of that away. Because you can overdo this. And when you overdo it, it doesn't look very nice. So we've got some silver details on here as well. We're going to put a little dot on there as well. And I think finally what I want is I want to darken down the blue of the of the cloth. So we're going to run the same color of non-oil into the cloth there as well. Now, of course we should not forget to do the back of the bolt gun. It's easily forgettable, but it's very important that we catch all sides of this as we work. But right away you can tell like the paint on the weapon is already kind of drying. You can see it makes a pretty big difference compared to how it first looked. It's a little dirtier, it looks a little bit more used. Once we put edge highlights on the edge of the, uh, or at the very top of the little pins on there, it's going to look great. And also we have this little machine on the leg that needs to be done. Right, and we have some parts of the model that we can use Agrax Earthshade on entirely. You just wash over all of it. But most of it is going to be detail work pretty soon. Right, so let's grab some non oil and we'll run that into all the recessed bits of the cloth. Create some nice shading there as well. It's going to darken it down, which is fine by me because I don't want it to look too close to the sash on the shoulder pad. So we don't need to be too neat about this. Later on we will also take some white and put it in the center of the arm. Because I want it to look like there's a little bit of bone protruding there. Um, and I think that's it. I think we're done with the non oil for now. So, final shade. Of course, clean the brush. And then we're going to very carefully start running some of the Agrax Earthshade into all the recesses. And also we're going to paint the hair and the leather parts, which can use a full coat, including the pouches. So we don't need to be super careful with some areas, but we do need to be very careful in others. So in terms of the hair, 
we can just slap it on there. And another thing that we have to take into account is that, well, he has these leather straps around his hair, and, well, it's a little bit tricky in that the hair right now has the same color as the leather, which doesn't look good. So we're going to have to work at uh, something to break that up a little bit, so it has a different look to it aesthetically. And I'm thinking that this guy is going to be a little bit more blonde, so we're just going to use this brown color as a base. Alright, so we're just going to run this into his hair, like so. Now, what we could also do is just use a couple of coats of Agrax Earth Shade on all the leather to really make that dark and to make sure that the hair is going to look brighter than it actually is. But I'm not sure about that yet. Right, as for the leather parts of the, the gloves, same thing for the grip on the weapon. We can just grab some Agrox Earth Shade, just run it in there, especially like the recesses of the fingers around this fin. If it gets a little bit darker in there, that is perfect. You can't quite see, I guess, but when it gets dark in there, you can see there's like a difference in depth between the hand and the grip. That's exactly what we want. Same thing for the tops of the fingers. Just going to run some paint in there. Right. That's going to look really nice. And of course, we need to have the strap of the gun, which is really hard to get a proper angle to show you guys. But of course, we have the strap of the rifle that needs to be done. So very carefully we're going to go in there and we're going to run some Agrax Earth Shade along these sides. Same thing over here, just where the strap kind of goes on to the armor. It's very important to get some Agrax Earth Shade on there as well. Now the same thing for the gold. You can just kind of slap that on there and that's going to provide a lot of depth and it's going to look really nice. But as for the armor panels, this is a little bit trickier, right? So we have, for example, the leg uh, over here. We can just go underneath the leg. This is an area where there would be a recess. So we're going to start running some paint into that little recess there. And of course, there's going to be some paint under that one as well. And everywhere, I see little cracks in the armor, like different parts of the same thing. We're going to start very carefully to run some paint into it. I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but let's have a look. This one right here, i looking at this at a wrong angle, so I may make a mistake that I can clean up later. We're going to get very small amounts of paint. I'm going to run that into all the recesses. Same thing with this side over here. We're just going to run some paint in there. Basically every little crack we're going to go through it and that's going to make a world of difference. Now I'm going to continue doing this and I'll see you guys in a moment. Now it should be immediately obvious what a huge difference all that shading makes. All of the armor panels immediately pop out from the model and it looks really good. It is a huge, huge difference, especially when you look at the back with the backpack and the legs and everything. Suddenly there's depth to the model and even the shoulder now looks completely different because there is some recess shading along the gold trim as well. So even that looks a lot less bland now and it, it's extremely good looking, but it is still very dark and there are things we still need to do. Of course we need to paint the face, the face is nowhere near done. Um, but one thing I want to focus on right now is the eye lenses on the helmet and that is why I've taken this thing off of the painting handle. The painting handle is very cool and useful but for this I need to put a little bit of white in the center of those eye lenses and at the same time I'm going to use that same color to paint a little bit of bone into the arm. Now the color we're going to be using for that is going to be 
and I had it here, yeah, there we go. It's going to be all for one grey. Now again, it's a grey color, but this color is so light, it's practically an off-white. So, I've used this as my white instead of, uh, what's the other, the other thing? They have a white paint called Ceramite White, and that thing always dries up very quickly. That pot is just useless to me. I dislike it. <laughs> so as always, good firm shake. Open it up. Now for this, of course, we will be using the small artificer layer brush. Because we need to do some highly finely detailed work here. So we're just going to grab a bit of paint, put it on the palette. Right. Palette right there, got some paint. Now as always, a little bit of water. Thin it down a little bit. Now the whites seem to be prone to clotting a little bit. There's a little clot right there, which is not great. And now we're going to run a tiny, tiny amount of detail into the eye sockets. And I have someone at the door, so I'll be right back. Right, so <laughs> my friend is coming up. We're going out today. I didn't expect him quite so soon, so I figured I could do this. Um, so I'm going to hurry up because he is in the elevator on the way up and I need to be very careful here and I'm going to focus more on the work itself than getting a good angle for you on camera but hopefully you'll be able to see it. I'll just do this and I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so now this is all done. I'm pretty happy with how the eyes turned out. They're pretty neat. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe I'm not entirely sure because I cannot very clearly see what the camera can see. But I think you can get a pretty good look. So I've painted the eyes white. And I've had a little dot of white in the arm. Which is to signify bone. Now we should probably paint some red around it as well, so that it has the undertone of blood already, or of meat and bone. We can do that a little bit later. First thing that I want to do is I want to take some blood letter. And blood letter is a glaze, and it kind of almost works like a shade, it's a little bit different. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but yeah, we're going to run some of this, not too much, just a very small amount into the eye lenses, which are supposed to be red on the Space Wolves. So, when we have a good look at this, I'm just going to grab a very small amount of it. We're going to run that into the lens area. And it's very, very thin. And that's exactly as it should be, as we want to have the center of the lenses to stay mostly white. And what that creates is kind of like a glow effect. I'm not sure if you can properly see it, but there is a slight glowing effect to that eye lens now. So basically the red pulls in the recesses of the eye lens and it keeps the, well, it, it tinted the white into a red color, but it is not entirely red. So it's darker red on the outside and it's a very small, light red on the inside. And that actually looks pretty good, because this red is different enough from the main line across this helmet. Now it's going to look pretty good. Alright, so that's all we need the blood letter for. Just a little glow effect on those eye lenses. Works out quite well. It does look pretty cool. Actually, I think, no, I think I have enough. We're going to keep it like this. Let's see if we can get a pretty good look at that. Maybe I should take it off of the uh, paint handle for just a moment. Just so you can get a clearer look at the eye lenses. Just a slight bit of red. Now we can move on from this. And I actually want to highlight the red on the helmet now. So we can start doing some, some stuff for that. We will grab my palette and we will need a different color of red. And the color we are going to use for that 
is we are going to use. Oh, I dropped it. Right, so the color I wanted to use is Evil Sun Scarlet. And following that, we are going to use a very small highlight of Fire Dragon Bright. Right, which is an orange color. It is going to be very. Uh, it's going to be a very strong contrast compared to the red. So we need to be very sparing. Yeah, we need to apply it very sparingly, very carefully. Now this red is ever so slightly lighter than Mephiston red. So again, we're going to add a drop of water. Now I don't think we need to highlight the shoulder pad, but for the helmet, I want to make sure some details pop out just a little bit more. So for example, this edge right here. Now this looks quite bright in the beginning, but when it dries it's actually going to blend in a little bit better and it's almost going to be, well it's going to be pretty hard to notice actually. So we're just going to turn this like that, so we're just going to run this with the flat side of the brush along the edge of the helmet. That creates a nice neat line. Now this simulates the effect of sunlight hitting that edge of the helmet. And we're going to start edge highlighting many parts of the model now. I need to keep a steady hand. The paint handle is ideal for that, but I want you to be able to see this as this is quite tricky. And again, if you overspill, you can clean up, but it's going to get harder and harder to clean up this stuff as we go along. Because you will have the shade effect applied, and things like that can really, you know, everything that has multiple stages involved, it's going to be a little bit trickier. Now, as for the faceplate, um, we're going to run a few, or a, a small line, down the center, so that it is very clear that this stands out, and we're going to run a very small line at the bottom in each direction. Right. And that should look pretty cool. So with that done, of course it needs to dry for a bit, but it should be relatively quick. Um, meanwhile though, we can take a look at some of the other colors that we are going to use. I'm going, I'm going to put this guy back on the paint handle really quick. There we go. So, for the brown stuff, like the leather pouches, we have got a different um, lighter brown called Bane Blade Brown. So we're going to use that to highlight the pouches, all the leather parts like the strap, um, the glove, the handle, and yeah, also I'm not sure what to do with the hair yet. I wanted it to be a little blonder maybe, so we might go over that with Zandri Dust. But I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm going to have to think about that, but uh, this one should be pretty easy. Now we are going to highlight all the gold using a special silver called Runefang Steel. So we got that down, that one right there. Um, then we are going to highlight the the arm using Calgar Blue, which we have used before. I think I'm going to leave the strap as it is. Now, as for the gold, we're going to use Gehenna's gold. And what else is there? Right, we have the purity seal. For that, we are going to use Ushakti Bone, which we are also going to use for the nameplate on the side of the bolter. Right. Um, finally, we also need to highlight all the black, and we're going to highlight the black with multiple colors, but we're going to start using Ashen Grey, which is uh, this one right there. It's a very dark grey. Now we're going to do a finer highlight with a lighter grey on top of the ashen grey because the ashen grey 
can be very, very subtle. Isn't always very clear. Right, so I think what we can do now is we can just move on to the Bane Blade Brown and start doing the pouches and the leathery bits. And again, good shake. And when we're done with this, we should be okay to continue on using uh, the orange one. And we're going to do an extreme highlight on the faceplate. Alright, so a touch of water, thin it down ever so slightly, but this is quite thick this particular paint of mine. So you need to find the consistency that you're happy with. This is slightly watery, but it seems to be working okay for me, so we're going to start using that. So any part that is leather, uh, we're going to run the brush by it ever so slightly along the sharpest edges. Including the pocket itself, or like the, the thing that closes off the pouch. Now the sun is getting lower, and it's actually making things a little bit harder to see for myself. Lighting conditions are always a little bit tricky for me when I'm trying to paint. Because it never seems ideal for me. I haven't found my perfect lighting setup yet. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see it okay on the screen though. As I said before, we, I might never do another video like this again. It's just because I wanted to try and see how well I could do it with the means that I have available to me right now. Alright, so this seems pretty extreme in terms of coloring, but it is going to even out when it is dry. It should be okay. Now, same thing for the strap. Going to do an extreme highlight on the edges. And if you're not sure if it's thin enough, like this one ended up pretty thick, but we're going to watch it dry and then we're going to take a second look at it and see how that turns out. Now, when we come to the glove of the hand here, for example, we can keep the dark leathery look and we can highlight some of the things that we want to stand out. For example, we want to highlight the very tips of the fingers. And this is helpful because when you highlight the tips of the fingers, it makes it stand out from the rest. Now where is my paint that I added? It's this one, no? Yeah. Right, so we're going to add a little bit of paint on top of the fingers. So they are a little bit lighter from the thing underneath. We're not across the whole finger, we're just going to take all the edges that stick out, like the knuckles as well. It seems my paint has dried out already, it is very quick. Alright, let me just grab a new... Actually no, I was in the wrong place, never mind. <laughs> We're going to be very carefully, but we're going to take the knuckles off the fingers. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it okay like this. But we have these little places where the finger bend, where the fingers bend. We can highlight those places as well. The knuckles. And again, once this is dry, it's going to be less obvious but at least it will differentiate itself a little bit from everything that's around it. All right. Same thing for the edge of, the, of this thing here. We're going to just run a little bit of extra light color along the edge of the leather glove there, so that it stands out nicely. I'm kind of out of screen view, I noticed. Thing is, I have this little screen on the camera so that I can take a look, but it's not the perfect angle for me to look at it, so it is a little bit tricky. Anyway, we don't have a whole lot of this leather, but we also have, for example, the leather on the sword pommel, so we're going to run some lighter brown along the highest points there 
Same thing on the inside of the blade. There's like uh, one circle going around here, another one right there. So, continue like this all around the model. For example, also the top knot, which needs to be done. And we should take one at the bottom as well. Just so that it stands out from where the hair begins, because it's all the same color right now. So I don't have any other brown colors. Some people may have more paint pots than I have. <laughs> but yeah, that's not me. So, we have to make do. Right, I think that's all the brown done. So we're going to clean up the brush. Next step would be the orange. Right, and as I said, the orange is quite bright. I'm going to give this a firm shake. And it's a nice pot, but it's really, really bright compared to everything else that we've done. In terms of red. So, like I said, we need to be very careful with this. It needs to be extremely sparingly applied. It still needs to be thinned down a little bit. This seems to be another very quick drying paint as well, though. That is something to keep in mind. Now then, I want to highlight the most extreme parts of the helmet, and those are going to be things like... these little edges on the center ridge. I'm not going to go all the way around, I'm just going to go a slight little bit from the edge, like so, so that the rest is still, you can see that the red is brighter at the edges, and then we have the extreme points here, they're going to be slightly orange, and we're going to do the same thing along the center of the faceplate. Ever so slightly just brushing along it it stands out a little bit more and that's it we're not going to touch it again I think except maybe run it along the bottom as well ever so slightly right now does the helmet complete except for the highlights of the gray which we could also do which will be an extreme highlight but we're not going to do that quite yet Next step, what should we do next? I guess we could do the blue on the arm, because we might as well, right? Actually, no, we should probably start with some of this in red to paint on the underside of the arm, because I want some parts of it to be bloody, so we don't have to waste time highlighting that later on. Right, a little bit of red, because it is a very small area that we'll be painting. Still needs to be thinned down, though. Now this is going to look ugly in the beginning, okay? I will tell you that right now. It's not going to look great. But it's a good it's a smart thing. It doesn't have to be clean because it doesn't it's okay if there's like the hint of um, shra um pieces of fabric being stuck in the wound, for example, that's fine. So if there's some blue still there, doesn't matter. Okay? Right now it starts to look a little bit like a rose, but you can tell what the idea is. The idea is that, of course, this is going to be a bloody stump. And we can paint along the edges here a little bit, because the mud will have spread a little bit as well, of course. But not too much, because we really want to have blood for the blood god to the rest. So this is going to be the edge of the bloody stump. We're going to leave it like that, clean the brush, and then we will move on to Calgar Blue. And again, firm shake. We don't need a lot. So just going to add some to the palette. All right. Now, at this point, my workstation is quite full because I have paints everywhere. And I'm making it harder for myself. And I always tell myself I will not. But I usually end up doing that anyway. 
<laughs> anyway, um, get rid of most of the paint because we only need to highlight the very edges. We're just going to have a quick look at all the little details on here. So there is like a little area that runs over here, same thing on that side. We're going to keep some parts of it dark. Now the lighting of the sun right now is making it a little bit hard for me to see, so I might stop for a little while and continue on when it's dark, and hopefully it will not impact the quality of the video too much. Because I'm so close, I'd like to finish it today. I don't want to wait another week so I can work during daylight hours. <laughs> That's just me though. Right, so this is going to be a pretty subtle one. There are some places that kind of stick out that could do with a small highlight. But most of this is going to start being bloody pretty soon anyway. So we don't have to spend ages doing that. Just, just so that there's a little bit of difference in the color. Once we do start adding the blood. It would be nice to have some of that stuff highlighted so it kind of sticks out if it is still visible by the end. Alright, next step would be, I guess, we could do sandry dust and we could edge highlight or just highlight the those parts of the miniature that need to be this color. This is kind of like a bone color, obviously the name is Yushapti Bone. You can use it for skulls and things like that, but we're going to use it for paper, for which it is also a pretty good color. As always, add a touch of water, thin it down ever so slightly, until it is a consistency that you like. Now this is another pretty quick drying paint. Right, so what we want to do here, in terms of the paper, I hope you can see it okay, because I can't tell. Um, <laughs> we're going to focus on all the highest parts, and then we're going to extend from that just a little bit, and we're going to leave some of the darker color in the recesses. So this flat area is going to get some Yushapti bone, then we're going to skip where it curves up, Same thing over here, just a little bit of paint right there, I'm going to leave some on the recesses. Like so, and that looks pretty good. I want to fill in that little part though, but the paint on my brush is already dry, so it doesn't fill. It's a little bit annoying, but there we go. Right, and of course we're going to take that, there's another piece of paper on the underside, we're just going to edge highlight that. Like so, leave all the darker color in the middle so that there's a clear difference between the two. Now of course we need to do the top of it as well. So we're just going to do the whole thing on the side. Unless there's a specific crumple that you want to leave in a different color. Of course we need to do the underside. Uh, get some more paint. And we're going to add some color to the back side of it. But again, try to leave some of the darker color in the recesses. Right, nobody's going to look at that a whole lot anyway. But that result is pretty good. So we're going to do the same thing with the bolt gun. We're going to put this on the higher edges. And then we're going to leave some in the recesses, like the darker stuff in the recess. So in terms of these endings, we can paint some of that on here. And we can connect that color up a little bit. Then we're going to not go all the way. Right? We're just going to paint some in here. Again, this paint dries extremely quickly. It's a little bit annoying. 
some specific colors seem to have this habit and I overspilled there a little bit I have to go clean it up in a moment right, and then this large flat area we're going to give the same color as well now this is a layer paint it's going to show through the underside just a little bit which is actually fine by me this is going to end up looking pretty good I do need to clean up this little part with some black later on though but this looks pretty good so far all right let me just take a quick break I'll be right back all right well the Sun has finally set so I can continue working on this thing and what's really bugging me about this is that his face is too dark so I really want to touch that up next so that we can then continue on with the other highlights like the gold and the, and the iron parts and as well as the black parts which also need to be highlighted but I want to just create this little focus on the face first so what we're going to do for that is we have Cadian Flesh Tone first of all we're going to layer this over onto all the highest parts of the face and then we're going to go over to Kisna Flesh and we're going to do a extreme highlight using that stuff. All right, so let's grab the palette. And again, it's dried out a little bit. You don't want water to be on top of the paper, but you know, a few droplets here and there is actually pretty good. As always, oh, God damn it. <laughs> luckily the Space Marines are pretty strong and they can take a hit because I keep hitting this guy over and over again. Anyway. Time to get some of this Kisla flash down onto the palette. And yeah, that about should do it. Of course, as always, a little bit of water. Thin it down into a consistency that you're happy with. Now this seems to flow pretty well. I don't want a whole lot on my brush, because it's easy to do this too much. But um, yeah, we're going to grab the model, we're going to start applying this to places like the forehead, obvious position to take. Now when we get to the eyebrows, I want to leave some of the darker stuff showing through. So I'm going to go over the ridge of the eyebrow here. Of course we're going to go over the nose and across the other ridge of the eyebrow. very carefully, very slowly, because this is the one of the most detailed things you can do. There's a lot of focus on the face. And so this is an aspect that I need to get really right for this model to really work. Um, right. There's also a little raised bit at the top of the nose there. So we're going to slowly, gently pick that out. before moving along. But basically, we're going to avoid the recesses and we're going to go over all of the higher parts and the flat parts like the forehead, the rest of the skull, obviously. We're going to pick out the cheekbones, the sides of the nose, but not too much. Now I'm noticing a little blob at the end of my thing which makes painting a little bit harder. It seems to be gone now, but you need to be very careful in this stage about where and how you apply the paint. You need to be very patient because it is easy to mess this up. Now as before this is going to require two thin coats. continue doing the face like this and I'll see you guys in a second all right so the face is not nearly done but the first step is completed and you can now see the facial expression really coming to life the next step will be to take some Kisla flesh 
lid of my wet palette fell because the flash is a little bit brighter and we're going to focus that on the raised surfaces such as the nose just a little bit and the eyebrows just a little bit of there uh, the lips as well so all of those things pop out just a little bit more so we're going to take some of this paint apply it to the palette we don't need a whole lot of this because again this is going to be an edge highlight on the most extreme surfaces of the face and not we're not even going through the whole thing now, because of that reason we really don't want a lot of paint on the brush we're just going to have a little bit like this and when we take this guy we're going to focus some of this at the entry of the nose on the top there make it really stand out we're going to going to go along the line of the eyebrows right so we can help that stand out a little bit more as well and again we don't want a lot of paint just a little bit just to make these features stand out a little bit. So we're also going to do the lips. Maybe a little bit on the cheek as well. Not the whole thing though, just the edges. Again, this might seem a bit extreme at first, but once it dries up, it should blend in a little bit more. It doesn't hurt to do this a little bit thicker, I think. lip as well All right with that the face is nearly complete we could also do the teeth in fact and I think we're going to do exactly that so for the teeth, I would like to go to an off-white again, which is not going to be Celestra Grey, it is going to be Alphawin Grey once again. And the same thing, it's going to be an extreme highlight. We don't want or need a lot of paint on the brush. We do want to thin it down ever so slightly. Right, and then get rid of most of the paint on the brush. Yeah, so it's a nice clean point with not too much paint on there and we're going to take a very careful step stab I guess at the inside of the mouth maybe just the upper teeth I can't really seem to find the lower ones unless we really paint it in there yeah, and it works I guess it's not the cleanest, it makes his mouth quite white I'm not super happy with that actually but it does draw attention to it a little bit now we could also do the eyes, the eyeballs, and this is very tricky, we don't need a whole lot. We should just very carefully dab inside the eye. Right, I'm not sure if I'm showing you all of this correctly, but this is very tricky stuff. Right, 
that maybe a little bit more. Yeah, it's a quite big. But it looks pretty good to me. And we can do a little dollop of white. Or um, not white, but black in the center as well. So for that we're going to go back to Abaddon Black. And this video is turning out to be a bit longer than I anticipated actually. But I hope you guys still enjoy it. And if not, you can always shut it off, come back later, continue to watch, I guess. Because it is quite long. <laughs> I am aware. It's not as quick and clean as a Warhammer TV video, but, well, I guess that's why I'm not Warhammer TV. <laughs> so let's see if we can get a small dot of black on the eye. Yeah, I don't know, I've never done this before. He looks cross-eyed. <laughs> Damn it, I don't even know how to look at this. Right, there we go. Doesn't look too bad actually. Still a little bit cross eyed, but. Nothing too bad. Alright, now if that is done, I guess we could use a little bit of red in the mouth. Just a little bit. And for that, I might use Carolburg Crimson, which is another shade paint. It's not really needed, but I don't want to paint red in there, like straight red. I just want to have the hint of red in between the teeth. And for now, a shade paint would suffice nicely, I think. Alright, so we're going to take this and very gently It's not as gently as I had hoped. <laughs> it's a little bit too much paint there. But the good thing about shade paint is that you can always take it off a little bit. And it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this face. It's not the best face I've ever done, I think. But it's certainly the second best face I've ever done. And it's something I've always struggled with so far. But this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Right now, as for the hair, I decided I want to go for a dirty blonde look. So for that we're going to go back to Sandry Dust, give this a good shake. And we're going to basically paint over all of the hair except for the very deepest recesses. So this should hopefully become some kind of dark blonde. Now after this, after it is all painted, I will come, I will come back to it uh, with a shade paint just to blend all the colors I'm about to add together because I'm going to add this, I'm going to add some new Shapti Bone. But I think those contrasts are going to be pretty stark. So, yeah, we're going to have to do something about that. But I think this, for a hair color, is actually pretty good. Hopefully. Alright, so I'm going to continue this. I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so I am finished with the Zandri dust and actually it looks quite good. I didn't expect this effect to be looking so well, but we're doing a we are going to do a final edge highlight. And with that we're going to use Yushapti Bone. So let's give this a shake again. And this is quite a bit brighter than the other paint. But it's okay, because we're going to tie these colors together with a shade at some point. Or not at some point, but after this. Once this is dry, 
we're going to add a shade. Now I want to focus some of this mostly towards the end and not at the very start of the of the hair. So that it just looks like the end of the hair is a little bit brighter than the rest. I've never done a blonde space marine, but here we go. See if we can make this look pretty good. So we're not going to focus this on everything, we're just going to do the biggest edges. Right, and this is going to be a little bit tricky, seems like. Again, this is a pretty fast drying paint, which can make things a little bit harder in terms of the colors transitioning. Right, so maybe something like that. We'll have a little, a few strands of it over here. I will continue this and I'll see you guys in a second. <laughs> 